welcome back to another episode of the Purpose Podcast, where we talk about all the reasons why we do the jobs we do every single day. Um, this week, I'm joined by Chris O'Connell, uh, who has got one of the most incredible stories after talking to him uh, yesterday, just about his story and where he's come from, everything he's done over the last 20 years in the recruitment space, um, some really incredible insight and value, and how he's changed from being a top biller to more focused on purpose and where that takes him. And he really is a great guest uh, to bring on this week. Um, the purpose of this podcast is to help those people who have been really struggling during the last 12 months and have been trying to find direction and where to go. Um, and I think this week, bringing Chris on to discuss his story, where he's come from, share some anecdotes and stories that can help provide a bit of value to you guys, really. So yeah, I'll throw it over to you, Chris. Thank you for joining me this week. Um, just wanted to give a bit of an intro about yourself and uh, a bit of your story, and we'll take it from there. Richard, thank you so much for the invite. We had a good catch up yesterday. I've been following some of your stuff on LinkedIn and very proud to be a guest and looking forward to hopefully giving some insight to the listeners. Mm. Um, 23 years experience in recruitment, um, started out at S3 Group, was their worldwide top biller, placing uh, project program management interims into various different um, industry sectors, was there for five years, loved the whole concept of recruitment. Um, I can go back further uh, before before all that, but um, but to move forward uh, from there, that I left, set up my own business, um, got that to thirty million pounds turnover, with under a hundred staff. We won fourteen industry awards, so lots of awards for our our profitability, but also how we engage with our customers and our clients. And uh, I was very proactive. I sat in the middle of the office, wouldn't ask someone to do something I'm not prepared to do myself. And the culture of managing the individual, not the team, and really getting under the skin of what motivates each person. Um, yes, we had some general training that suited everybody, but ultimately I think our success was down to hiring the right people in our weaknesses, but also, you know, um, really understanding each individual person. Um, I sold that through private equity, which is a very difficult transaction. And I can elaborate on that. Um, that enabled me to have quite a lot of well-being and mental health issues. Um, some suicide attempts, uh, took some time out of the, of, of, of the sector, um, which, which, which um, did cause me some challenges. Um, reflected on, on, on my life at that point, and whilst that was great achievement, um, what I'm doing now I feel is, 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 is better and certainly more fulfilling and happy for me because even though I was winning all the accolades and the business was going well and I was a millionaire at 27, all that kind of stuff, I was very focused on the material aspects of life. So houses, washes, cars, offices, all that kind of stuff. But I see life completely differently. Um, I'm a leadership and wellbeing coach. So I go into businesses, build them up, grow them, um, you know, get them fit for purpose for sale, all that kind of organizational development stuff I can do. But what I'm really enjoying is the mental health and well-being piece. I'm a mental health first aider now. I'm a mental health and well-being advocate and uh, uh, ambassador. Um, mm -hmm. But really educating leadership teams around how to engage with their with their people. Yeah. The whole kind of one-size-fits-all dictatorial approach doesn't work anymore. And there's a big play on mental health and well-being and being compassionate, being vulnerable, and building a, building a, a, a relationship with your with your colleagues in a much more human way. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I'm enjoying the most, and uh, and that's what I'm getting a lot of value out. So my my purpose now is really, I feel I'm more I'm more rich. Well, I am more rich in um, fulfillment and purpose than I am financially. But the financial aspect is is coming. That's what I think. To, to sort of round off my introduction, I think that um, if you have that north star mapped out, that vision, that purpose mapped out, um, everything else seems to fall into place. So funny you say that north star. Um, as, a, as a business True North was built on that very much that principle of uh, follow your True North and it's so interesting that you've touched on that point that it's about doing what you're passionate about it's about finding that purpose mm. and you know you've built a business of almost you know, 100 people in the team and that's no easy feat in itself and bringing the right people on to do that and achieve where you want to go with that is even a, it's a that's a challenge within itself um, what when you were trying to find those individuals that would join that business, this, this is probably as an example, as one of many, but what, yeah. what challenges did you face when you were trying to build that, you know, what they, cause to find the right person and not affect the current culture that you've got in the business is, is a two way street. Cause one person can destroy all of that. Right. So what, yes. how, did you, how did you go about that as a team to, you know, build that for everybody and know everyone to the point? Pretty good question. I, I think, at the start, we didn't know what we didn't know. 
So we were, myself and my business partner were quite new to it and quite naive to, to sort of managing our own business. So we probably made a few mistakes, but very quickly um, we identified what our straight strengths and weaknesses were um, and, and focused on those. Um, I was so, very good at certain aspects and he was very good at other aspects. So we kind of um, siphoned each other off into our own kind of autonomy and make sure we executed what we're good at and hide in people where we had our weaknesses. Uh, that, that was really key. Um, and I think we, we stuck to our guns on that. And just, just making sure that um, uh, we were each other's critical friend as well. Because I, th- I think, you know, when you're in your own environment, you know, sometimes you can only hear, feel, see and touch your own environment yeah. and yeah. you know we, we we kind of made sure that we listened to other people as well when we, we talked to our our peers and our competitors and just just um, made sure that we were con- looking at continually improving ourselves um I, I think as well because because we were we were very hands-on as well initially i think that attracted people as well but we set very we had a very clear vision of the business but we made sure that each individual had their own career path then their own north star mapped out um so it wasn't just make some money and uh that was it 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 was very focused on career development and um and having a clear roadmap for each person around where they're going because not not everyone want not everyone joins or is in recruitment or, or sets up recruitment for money some people some people want money some people want recognition some people want autonomy so it's just, it's, it's, it was more just being in tune with each individual, I think. Um, uh, and that, that enabled us to, to attract the right. We had a you know, very, very good training as well. Um, we reinvested in the business. And I think because we had uh, a good contract book, uh, we had lots of ongoing consistent revenue. So it enabled us to reinvest back in the business. So we we're constantly reinvesting back in the business as well. And obviously... When you're taking it from that angle as well, what was the, there's so much you can gain from doing that and everyone's got their own story. Everyone wants to be able to do their own thing and develop that. And, you know, like you just said, find your own true north in a way. It allows you yeah. to do something. It's almost like the five-year plans, the 10-year plans, you know, uh, the ideal day. That's one that we use where it's, so we talk, we actually write down a vision board. This is where, like, um, I don't yeah. know your spiritual tool. If you do um, mind, uh, and you know that's something that really can allow you to grow. Um, and we do, I do, we do vision boards and find like I've got an ideal day written down. When my ideal ideal day is uh, is van life, and that's currently what I'm in the process of going through. I'm currently in the process of converting a Mercedes Sprinter long wheelbase. And nice. I want to take this job on the road and I don't think there's a single recruiter in the world that's doing that. Um, and yeah. I've, my, my whole setup is pretty much fully remote now. Uh, my Wi-Fi is fully remote. It just needs a connection point. And it just allows me to do things that, you know, we, we're moving into a world where we can live from behind our desk and that vision that we've created as a business as well, it allows us to guide that conversation and, you know, help those, you know, when we sit down and talk to, are we i see candidates and clients the same people are people mm. right um and when we sit down with them we try and paint a vision of what what they're looking for and it is incredibly difficult yeah. and you know on by both sides of the coin trying to bring the right people into the business who've got the right passion and drive as well as find the right people that can help grow that into something bigger and so bigger than themselves in a way as well and that's what you know i've, I've i think we resonate there in that sense that it's trying you're trying to achieve something that is yeah. far, far bigger. And, you know, having the right people around you to do that is incredibly powerful. Um, mm. And when you're coming to talk about um, people that have in your life that you're wanting to help, you've been, you've had an incredible story that have come back from, um, what pushes you to help others? That's a very good question. I, I, I think my own lived experience and having been very successful in my own right at a very early age and then getting there and realizing actually all that glistens isn't gold and learning from my own mistakes around losing uh, my family my, you know losing my my health my wealth um my mind really um on in the pursuit of this perceived destination of, of happiness and joy um i want to use that experience to um improve my own life but improve others 
uh, life around what's actually important what is their why you touched on that yourself you seem to have found your why and I think I think that's really important so the, the whole serving others for me is it's 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 that's that's my success that's my legacy or I want to leave a legacy behind me that doesn't have a value uh, a financial value to it because uh, I think that will come but has has a meaningful value to it in terms of what I've imparted on others and what I've helped others achieve and do you in doing that would you find that you are presented with people that create blockers when you want to help them they don't see what you're trying to resonate in you know, your your experiences and what you've done do you yeah. find that there is a blocker to helping certain individuals that you know even working as coach and going into yeah. helping them is that do you find that quite a lot in the work you do now i do actually i i i, I I'm very honest with my clients, potential clients. If, if I don't feel that they can be coached or if I feel that I'm not the right individual, I will, I will tell them. And unfortunately, there are some people that, that uh, aren't ready to, to do that. You can, I believe that you can take a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. And a good, a good, a good coach um, will identify that, get the person on board if they're right. But also, a coach's lifespan with a client tends to be, I think, usually relatively short. In terms of, um, I think a good coach would 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 provide the toolkit, uh, the techniques, and the right questions to enable the individual to to find the answers for themselves and actually implement an action them for themselves. Notwithstanding that, um, you shouldn't hire a coach just when you need it when you think you need a coach. You should hire a coach when you don't think you need a coach as well, because it's it's the times when you think you're going, you're doing really well. You, 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 I think everyone needs everyone need, needs that sounding board. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and that why why is that? I think I think people. Um, I think the whole softer skills in leadership it, are, are actually the hardest ones. So things like vulnerability, compassion, and so when I walk into some of my larger businesses, I'll, I'll work with the owner and I'll ask I'll ask them questions like, "Well, talk to me about your last trauma and, and all this kind of stuff around." you know, understanding what's going on inside the head and um, what they're doing outside of work as well. But more often than not, it's what we're doing outside of work that impacts what we're doing inside of work. So you can have all the branding, all the, all the, all the nice words on the wall and, you know, all the, all the operations in place. But if your mindset's not right, your behaviors, your attitudes, you know, the stuff, the content you're absorbing, your sleep, your diet, all this, all the friends that you associate with, uh, or you haven't got a clear vision as to why you're doing it, you'll only go so far. It's the health, wealth, social, isn't it? Aspect, isn't it? It's um, if you don't yeah. you align in all four areas of your life, um, yeah, and one thing's taking an impact, the long-term effects that that can have, it, and you when you acknowledge it, it's great to acknowledge it because that's the start, isn't it? That's where you can yeah. start to have a bigger impact on what you're trying to achieve. Um, but if you don't acknowledge it and you let it get the better of you, and you just and it, but even from a health point of view, um, I you know if, if you if you if you feel like you're got a bit of weight on you or that's just an example but that affects your sleep that affects your mentality that affects what mood you go into work um, yeah and it's it's like one big we, as individuals we're all oil machines and yeah if one if one thing's out of place right we just sit there and it's like oh you know and our, our, the, the end of the machine that we're in something starts to notice it and it, the impact is you know extended and something else hmm. happens and then it's but that with the with the mindset bit because that's that's quite key in, in the work that we do it's challenging and you know if you're not in the right mindset coming into this job every single if you're not in a certain mindset particularly um, it can be the determining point whether you're going to you know help play help someone find a new role get someone in for an interview yeah Re, how do you how do you help people to combat that what's the way that you approach it from your perspective I think I think you've got to be your own biggest supporter I think I think more often than not um in any walk of life or you know, if you're applying for a job or if you're in a career now or you're running a business most of the time the biggest hurdle or the biggest enemy is yourself and what i mean by that is that the power of the of of, of, of the wrong thinking or the right thinking can really transform uh what you're doing um so for me every morning um you know i get up and i plant my feet on the ground before i do anything i'll, I'll breathe in and out quite slowly just to ground myself for a good three or four minutes. And, you know, you get the narrative in your head. Everyone gets it. And nine times out of ten nowadays, it's all positive. But sometimes there's, there's that odd kind of negative narrative. And I, 
I catch it and I talk to myself. So it's kind of choosing the day and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I, I, I think that um, we've all had adversity. I'm, I'm, I'll happily talk about more about my adversity, but I've, I've done a, a recent podcast myself on, on, on people who've had adversity and it, 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 it was very humbling. And the feedback I got from that is that and what I kind of derive from it is that there's always someone that's got a worse or more horrific story, usually. Um, and it's an age old saying, it, it's, you know, um, I believe now what happens to us normally happens for us. So you can, I think, most of the time still have a mechanism whereby you can choose whether to vic victimize yourself or have that pity, pity party. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm an empath. I'm very sympathetic. And it's about understanding that. But ultimately, you can also utilize that adversity to, to really uh, propel yourself and others around you. So in terms of the mindset, I think it's, I think it's the number one most important thing. Uh, and then behaviors, attitudes and skills and experience, they come along. But all these, these kind of skills, um, I think, are fundamental. And you mentioned, you mentioned adversity then. Um... Or would you be open to sharing some of the some yeah been through that you know have allowed you to get you to where you are today? Yeah. So I was two. My brother was three. We were left abandoned in a caravan. Um, my dad came home from work. My mum had just left us um, all night. My dad then wasn't capable of looking after me. My brother um, emotionally, financially, um, he just 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 wasn't there. Um, so I was fostered for four years. Uh, my dad then took us back uh, into a council um, flat. We used to get up at five o'clock in the morning at six or seven years old and go to work with him and walk to school and all this kind of stuff. Then he, um, he remarried and she abused me quite badly for several years. Uh, so the first two female figures in my life or mother figures in my life were horrendous role models. That cascaded into my uh, inability to choose a good partner. So you know, the girlfriends that I had um, weren't right for me and were very toxic and very abusive towards me. Um, I suffered parental alienation with my first child for a number of years, um, which was awful. <laughs> um, battled through that. And uh, yeah, I think um, uh, lost my business, really, my, my £30 million pound business. Um, it was kind of taken from me in, in, in a way that uh, uh, was pretty horrific um, uh, and a very, a very sudden thing. Um, so to lose that business, um, which is what I spent my entire life building, was a real, a real shock and a real surprise and a real challenge. And that uh, brought on a reasonable amount of mental health issues. Um, I lost my son, my oldest son, because of it. I lost my home, got divorced, um, suffered more, par more parental alienation, um, but also a number of suicide attempts as well, um, which I've talked about before, um, and further abuse um, more recently, uh, which I haven't talked about. Um, so that all sounds a bit... Victim me, um, but they're fa it's facts. But the last two years have been transformed transformative. So I've ut utilised that adversity and um, been able to, been able to talk about it on in forums like this to provide people with uh, some comfort, maybe some encouragement around that it's okay to do that. And I think it's a strength. Um, so yeah, and I, I, I've used that lived experience to be a better version of myself to give back to the sector that's helped me build my business, but also just, just, just to help others as well. So that's what I'm passionate about. And, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've been Southwest entrepreneur of the year, you know, I've had lunch with Richard Branson three times in a row for my business achievements. What, you know, what I'm doing now is so much more fulfilling. Um, I'm a mental health first aider now, just, just, just that stuff that I'm doing. I just, I, I just think, I think you can have it all. You can have that purpose. You can have that. Why you can have that North star. And you can have the money as well. Um, and I prefer, I prefer it in that order, to be honest. And uh, it's so really important there that, you know, with everything that you have gone through over the years, um, particularly when you were 
we've all had low points. I've, I've had mine. Mine was, mine was back end of 2019. Um, and for me, everything happens in the freeze. Uh, with, when it comes yeah. to stuff, it's always the way. It's never, never yeah. less or usually more, but it's always free. And free things, you know, luckily one of them, could have, I, I haven't really spoken about it. Um, one was a relationship. Um, one was an assault. And the other was a, um, actually my sister, um, who now works with the team, um, but she was really ill. And, um, you know, when those three things are all happen at once, like the whole world, yeah. in front of you, and you don't really know how to, you know, react. You don't, you're just there like, well, how am I going to get out of this? And, well, you know, I've, uh, there was some impact there for me and I resonate with your, your point. It's just like, when you're at that lowest point, what was the... Mm. What was the driver that got you to keep going? What was what was that? What was that? That fire? That 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 north star that you know helped you get through that? Um, I think deep in deep in my gut somewhere, uh, knowing that actually I am worthy, and for I'm 44 now, but for 42 years, really, I've never felt that I was always had this massive self-esteem issue um but i would probably say my children as well my 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 three beautiful children i've got a 19 year old now uh, a three-year-old and a and a seven-year-old um and not to put them through what i've been through i think um so that was probably my my north star and, re- and really i mean um i think when you're abandoned by your mum i mean the, uh, there's worse stuff that's happened to people but it's kind of a bit of a kick in the teeth so for me it was a bit like what's the worst that can happen to me you know there's not, not not much more someone can do to me in terms of just like in the connotations of of being dumped by your own mother you know, it's quite a hard thing really um so that that hasn't helped me but it has in a way um and it's a bit of a bit of a gift i actually went around to i actually tracked her down about six years ago, went around there and, um, yeah, she was a bit of a shell of a woman and, you know, didn't really offer any, 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 any kind of uh, reasoning behind it. But I guess um, in answer to your question, I think it's just it maybe, maybe that adversity has given me my drive and my belief to, to, uh, to realise if I can get through that, I can get through anything. Absolutely. And that's, that's a similar sense of how it happened to my, my dad was the same. Um, other side the other parent um my mum has always been a figure to me um still is today um my dad came out of the picture in 2012 three kids uh, yeah left the country with his new wife and new two born children um two great kids um don't know where he went um again i did the same thing tracked him down um uh, actually went back in 2017 to bulgaria to try and see him and uh, yeah I think it was 2017, and I went. To, I went to track him down. Had a and like it was like it was in Bulgaria at the time, and told him the week before I was going to be. I told him where I was going to be, and I waited, waited, waited to turn up. No, and oh, yeah. I still don't know. You know, in the same way, it part of me is like, what would that conversation have been? And yeah. in one respect, I really wish I had that conversation. In the same aspect, I'm glad I haven't. And it's it's. Mm. it's it's really hard, you know. I was lucky to have a stepdad figure come into my life, um, guide me to where well, he was ex-military, so it's a bit different. Um, but guide me to then the army, and then obviously my shoulder had an injury, not out of choice, uh, just it happened. Um, and you, but that guidance that I did have there, that was it was there, it was some form of figure, and I'm very f- thankful for that. But when it's your actual, um, you know person who is in you know we say that all is looking to bring you up and bring you up into the world yeah in their eyes and you don't have that it's, it's it can be really you don't realize the long-term impact that it can have mm. you start talking about it and you know building a conversation yeah. around it and i think this is you know, yeah this is part of of the process of this purpose podcast is to, is to highlight these these conversations and realize that you know we've all gone through stuff that you know this pandemic's brought out a lot yeah. of ability. I think that's right. I think that you aren't, you've answered the common stigma around. I mean, it's, it's, it seems only been the last two to three years maximum, really, 
the, the whole stigma around mental health or trauma trauma or being open uh, has has changed. And I think I think I'm really encouraged by the likes of yourself, myself, other other people who are willing, able and understand the importance and value of, of doing this. And it, for me, it's an absolute strength. There are still some people out there that look at this and look at me and think, oh, God, here he is again doing his. But, mate, it's it's the most it's the strongest, bravest, most um, courageous thing without not me specifically, but general people who do this. And it, it, it's just the way forward. I mean, we're all human beings, honestly. Um, you know, I think, I think that's one good thing that's come out of COVID. I think people can hide behind their corporate image or their suit or their or, or their job title and all this kind of stuff. But actually, um, the way to win hearts and minds and build build relationships is a, a to put on the oxygen mask first and love yourself and respect yourself and love yourself. B, be a bloody human being. You know um job titles cars washes all that kind of stuff you know status it means sweet fa if you if you if you're not 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 a, a kind person i think um yeah people feel right it's you know and gone are the times where you know going to london will wear a suit we you know a lot of our lives are now yeah. on a virtual screen unfortunately yeah um and it, it, we can't sit here and say it's going to continue like this way for the next five, 10 years. But nobody knows right now what's going to happen. Um, yeah. As I always say, you can throw a, dart, a, a map of the world and see where it lands and you know, hope for the best, but you just don't know what, what, what will happen. And um, yeah. nobody really knows. And that's, the, that's the, kind of the, the great silver lining about you know, time is that we're living in the moment. We're not living in the past. We're not living in the future. We're in the present. And it's about mm. how you take those moments and, like, as, as they say, run with it and see where it can take you because that's the end of the day. That, that, that's, where, that's where everything happens, you know? Yeah. I think, I, think, I think there's two schools of thought, isn't there? There's, 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 there's the people that feel that, you know, continually going backwards and talking about adversity in your past mm. doesn't serve you and it kind of slows you down and there's there's other people that think actually the more you talk about it you know the better it is and and and, and you need to process it. i i I, th- I think that a blend of the two is important but i I, th- I think in order to really progress if you have trauma you have adversity and you have stuff that's that's lingering or suppressed there's this there's, there's stuff i haven't told you but um unless you find an outlet for that you i don't you're never really gonna 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 reach where you want to reach um uh, that, that's that's my that's my advice really around. Um, but once you have done that, you can then move, you can only you can either you can only actually move on once you've done that. What what do, what do you think to that? Oh, it's that kind of brings us to my next question. Um, to be a fair, which is kind of advice. Um, yeah, there's so many ways of looking at it. To be fair, you can look at it in the sense of um, there's two schools of thought are both valuable to themselves. There's one part of it that says like. Yes, this is the way forward. And to be honest, it's um, it's kind of a hard question for me. To be honest. I've, really, I've never really thought about it like that. And it's about how you take those moments and grow from them. And yeah, yes, take it from there. I, I agree. I, I I think that uh, if you are going to talk about it, and I would advise that you talk about you're talking about it in a way that you want you want to utilize that experience to process it, but also help others as well you're not talking about it just because you want to bend the ear of somebody and there's no meaning behind it it's about that's about growth the reason why i do this i don't have to do this i've done about 15 16 18 of these things now um and every time i do it it it, one million percent benefits me but every time i do it as well i always get some feedback going wow thank you you've encouraged me to do the same and that it's about intent i think it's about intention um yeah and I think from that intention, it's like the, this, this podcast, the only intention is to help one person every episode. If it's the guest, if it's a friend, if it's son, daughter, yeah. mum, I've had some I had a guest on who, you know, showed it to her mum and she cried, you know, and for me, that's the most yeah. impactful thing that can come from it. Um, I've also, you know, had guests that have gone on to show it to their CEO and he's gone, I, the way you spoke about it and asked the questions, I'd never thought to ask him that way. And it completely changed my yeah. life, about the way I thought about that person. And that is, you know, this, this is where this podcast comes in is to highlight intention and what we're trying to give. And like I always say, I can't talk to 200 people a day. I, I simply can't. And yeah. no, you can't either. We can try, be super, super man. And it's, uh, 
Mm. You know, we've only got so many powers. Um, so yeah. podcast is a great way of podcast generally are a great way of highlighting that this conversations that need to be had. Um, and that's, that's where we love going with them. Um, which, which kind of gives you back to the advice question. Um, so if we took back to the beginning of your career where you started out, what would you say is the one thing that, you know, what bit of advice would you wish you'd given yourself right at the beginning? Um, I would say slow down to speed up. I mean, I, I went at a million miles an hour, you know, I literally, you know, 98% of my time was just focused on work. And I'm not saying that don't work hard, but I, I, I think it's about, uh, you know, building a great business isn't the be all and end all. Um, so for me, it's about finding that, 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 that balance around, yeah, your career, your success is important, but, you know, don't forego your relationships, don't forego, forego your personal development and your, and, your, and your health and your mind and all that kind of stuff. So for me, I would have taken a more pragmatic approach, um, empowered a bit more people, delegated a little bit more and spent more time with my family and my and my and built up my social life it's all, all amazing now but not by much but just 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 tweaking that because well, for me in my head i just thought if i can get the business to this this number everything's going to be great and i got to 10 million got to 15 million got to 20 25 30 and every time i got there i was like oh let's go for more and it was just so it would just it the the, the i didn't i didn't enjoy the destination i, I didn't really enjoy the journey so, I mean, I think it's about, it's about enjoying the journey, I think. Mm. And that sounds, that's, that's so, such a good point because I, I was, I was the same. It's about enjoying the journey and um, I, having worked in industry, you know, the super industry is its own kettle of fish. I'm going to call it. Um, it's an incredible industry, very rewarding. Um, mm. It's a hard work, play hard industry. Um, you can see some amazing things. You can work on some amazing boats with some amazing people. And I, I yeah. But my time that I did, um, it just happened to be that we spent six months in a shipyard in a pandemic, um, you know, which isn't the great, greatest of experiences to have, but it's, you know, it, it was what was given. And yeah. I learned a lot about the people I worked with and where it would take me. Um, but working in that environment is very much the same. You realize that money's not everything. Uh, like uh, what was, I've worked in so many different vessels over the last, over that 18 month period. And, you know, we're talking 10 million, 15, 20 million, uh, 65 million with one of the valued. Um, and I worked for two billionaires and um, both very interesting guys, very, di very different backgrounds, a um, mm. lot of value to add from them. And uh, I, some stories that were shared with me over my time on different boats, I learned so much. In saying that, though, I felt like I was trying to fulfill a lifestyle of theirs, not mine. And... Uh, you know, like you say, it's not about the watches, the cars, the houses. Yeah. Um, and it's not about money. And I chased money. And, you know, yeah. where, when people chase money, you don't come from the right place um, because you're always, you're always chasing. It's like you're always chasing your tail, right? And yeah. That, for me, that, that's such a good point that, you know, it's, it's not about that. Like, you do it from intention. Do it from place of actual goodwill and realize that if you can achieve and help something that's bigger than yourself, a lot of people don't understand this. It's, it's amazing how many people don't get this notion of being part of something bigger than yourself. It's, it's like they look at it and go, what do you mean? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, I think um, yeah, I mean, I, I walk into businesses sometime and they've, they've got these, 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 these quite powerful words on the wall, you know, integrity, purpose. And then, so what's your purpose? And they're like, you know, they're kind of lost for words. They don't even know what it, what it means or they can spell it. I mean, without being too disparaging, but I, th I, think, I think it comes with experience. And I also think that purpose, your purpose can evolve and change. So it doesn't have to be this fixed thing. And I, th I, th I think it's, um, yeah, it, uh, I think up until the turn of the century, certainly uh, a picket fence, a Ferrari and a, and a car was, was deemed as purpose and success. And it's only kind of like authenticity and purpose is quite overused now. Um, a lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon, but I, I think I think you know when someone's been genuine. I think you can tell now if someone's been authentic. And I think you can tell if someone's just putting the wall over your eyes. And when you get it right, honestly, uh, you know I've I I I had a six bedroom mansion with a swimming pool, which which I haven't got anymore. Uh, I've got a much smaller property now, <laughs> um, but 
not to say I won't have that again, but I mean, I mean, I'm I'm so much more in tune with myself, and I think that the biggest success is is I think my biggest biggest success is probably learning to love myself really, um, and I mean that in a in a very <laughs> non egotistical way. I, I'm very proud of who who I am now, um, and t- the ability to teach that to other people I think is is just so so powerful. Achieve something that you know can have a bigger impact on someone else's life and when you can do that and some people will go through life and not know these messages and they will not understand these messages um and mm. that's fine it's it's not going to get to everyone and uh, you know if, if we could yeah. 6.6 billion people uh, and some <laughs> um you know then you we know, yeah. a very different world if it's like we all come from different perspectives we all come from different backgrounds and yeah we're all informed by you know the things we do every single day, and for me, it's it's about how can we, how you can take that and and run with it, and that also brings in my question back to the career and the advice that you've given yourself. To you've been in the industry twenty three years, you, you you know this space, you know like the back of your hand. Yeah. What would you? There's so many myths that come into this world that we work in, and. I, I'm always sat here like, oh, you know, there's, there's so many, and I always hear new ones every single day. Was there anything yeah. that you would like to debunk in your from recruitment that has bugged you for for years? Well, I, th- I think I, I'll do recruitment and coaching. I think because I've kind of, I'm, st- I'm, in, I'm in both. I've kind of used that word again, pivoted <laughs> yeah. um, from recruitment to kind of recruitment coaching. But I, th- I think that. Um, one of the biggest myths is money, I think, in recruitment. I think, yes, people are in it for the money, but actually that has changed significantly now. I think people want, again, a sense of purpose around that. They actually want to be ethical and have that integrity and actually enjoy the process of actually placing that individual and taking, taking, you know, changing that person's life. There's still, there's, there, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of recruiters out there that are just in it for the numbers and putting the bum on the seat but i think i think you'll be surprised how many people actually really enjoy the process of of delivering a, a, a solution to a client's problem but also you know changing someone's life and changing someone's career um but also also the 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 the, the eq uh, the emotional intelligence a good recruiter needs to have to be successful and i think certainly people outside the sector have this bias or this judgmental uh, view of a recruiter being just someone who can match a CV to a job or whatever, you know, it's it, it is one of the hardest jobs out there. And I put a post about this recently, and it it, got, it had some interesting feedback around. We're not just selling a car or a house or an inanimate object. We're 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 we're, we're not selling people, are we? But we we people are our product, and the influence that you need to have on both sides of the, the candidate and the, and the client equation is, 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 is significant. And it's a bit of an art to actually be, be able to, to consistently deliver that solution when people, people are people, they can do anything to change their mind. So I think, I think it's, um, there is a lot of it. There is a lot of in EQ in, in, in recruitment that uh, is, is underestimated. And with coaching, I think um, as well, uh, coaches get a bad, Bad, generally get a bad rep or, or, or bad perception around they're all the same or or you know it's a lot of woo and it's a lot of uh, a lot of just words but I, th- I think a good coach will will um ask the right questions and enable the person to find the answers themselves some people don't want don't want a, a solution they just want an ear or they want the empathy and it's all that again it's that eq piece around i think coaching uh, emotional intelligence recruitment it's all you know all the softer skills are 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 really important and uh i think there's a huge misconception in both both sectors around what it takes to be successful absolutely and it's notion that um one that always gets me is like oh you hear from me once never again um that is that's something that we all everyone tries to there's a lot of recruiters out there that are just in it for the bums on seats i'm very aware of that and you know, I'm not. I'm not batting any any recruiters either here in saying that. And um, I, I do strongly believe that there is this notion that we, we are just, you know, in there is in it for the money. We're not here to, you know. And there's there's some clients that we work with that make it, you know, if we we can we can try. We want to deliver the best service to them, but in the request they ask for, it's yes. time to find that um, hours hours and hours on LinkedIn and making sure we can try and find it. Word of mouth 
growing your network, growing your brand. Um, yeah. So many moving parts in it. And, you know, as, as both of us are very active on LinkedIn anyway, um, you know, posting regularly, I can imagine there is a perception as well, but from some people it's just like, oh, you're spending more time posting on, on LinkedIn than you are <laughs> out, out to us. And it's just like, no, it's, 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 a, two, it's a two-pronged attack. It's, yeah. If you're seeing our posts, that's a good thing because that means you're seeing our content, which is great. Um, yeah. And when you are in that position and you're ready to look for something new, you're going to, who's going to be the first person that comes to mind? You know, that's how you've got to think about it. And um, yes. I certainly do believe that, you know, recruitment is now, you are a brand, you are your own brand. And 100%. if you can work that out and really, this is why we've start, I've started the podcast as well. I've always wanted to do this anyway. Um, but uh, doing something that is more aligned with me and where I want to go and what I want to do, that's been the hardest part. And yeah, as my our managing director has allowed me to do, it's allowed me to grow something that can, I hope, what I would like to grow into something that's bigger than myself and bring on people mm. to have these conversations and, you know, I just have a chat because that's all it's about at the end of the day is to create a discussion. Um, but that also, that also brings in the question because you, obviously you've gone through so much. You've worked with business partners, you know, people who have been in your life throughout. Um, and this question sometimes, some people think it's, it, I can't pin down to three people who have influenced you the most over the last, you know, throughout your life, uh, whether it's family, inspirational figures, you know, wh- but who would you say are the ones that have helped guide you to where you are now? Wow, do you know what? I haven't really thought about that. It's a very good question, I, and, I, and I, th- I don't want to do the archetypal answer, but I, I can only be truthful. I, th- I think it does go back to my children. I touched on that earlier around, you know, what they give any parent really uh, that in- that inspiration, that 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 reason to to be who you are. Um, I think my foster mum as well. I think she was the first person that gave me an semblance of a family unit, but also the first and one of the only people really. Um, that made me feel I was worthy. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of choking up saying that now. Actually, when I'm on reflection, it's like, mm. um, and then I guess I'm going to say the third person as myself, which is a quite a strange answer. I was going to go for like someone like Gary V, who I really enjoy, and all these other, you know other people that I, I, I love, but. I now see myself as 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 the biggest guide, and what I mean by that is that when you tap in, when you tap into the right intuition, and 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 you start loving yourself, you can. I think you can parent yourself, you can coach yourself. Um, uh, and uh, I like to end, yeah, uh, and I mean that in in a way that I feel proud that I found myself kind of. I think I think you understand what I mean by that. I think I think it's not a an ego ego response it's a response that's that kind of says to me that um i'm now comfortable and trust myself yeah. and uh, i think that's quite big for me personally i think that for, uh, you mentioned it at the beginning as well um it's about you know look after yourself look after you know look don't kick yourself so much you, you see it was like right yeah like you mentioned about you know we all put this big, we put ourselves on this pedestal that is sometimes what we believe is bigger than ourselves. And when in fact it probably isn't, it's, you know, it's, you know, just don't kick yourself so much because when you kick yourself, yeah. you're, not, you're not in the right frame of mind and, you know, no. trying to achieve something. And it's like your, your subconscious is a very powerful thing that will tell you, you know, no, no one else can give you blockers like your, like your subconscious. It, it really can really. mental blocks. Um, I've, um, when I, I started doing this and when I spent a couple of weeks building the podcast and what I wanted to do and who I wanted to get on, um, even like the, the process of editing, the process of, um, you know, how to design, like I'm, I've never really done it before. I was, there were so many like mental challenges and like perceptions of how, how difficult it is to do. And now I do yeah. it back of my hand because it's, exactly. like, you repeat the craft and you just take it from there. But no, I completely respect that decision, of like you know, that thought that he says is myself, because no one's really come on and said that. You know, a lot of people have said, you know, there's just I just see a lot of influential people who have helped me, and yeah, that's 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 a different level. That's like you know, end of the day, like you are yourself, and that's what's happened. And your kids as well. Your kids are the ones that you know they, they give. I'm, I'm only an uncle, um, but they give you something that can, you know, 
you, you just you they're, they're, this is an embodiment of you as well isn't it and it's yes on to achieve um you know you've got uh one kid 19 now like you know you that's you, you know there's that's a whole lifetime of you know yeah um and you know watching watching them grow up to who they are today and that's something that what i've learned from what i can go off from what i've been told is that parenting is one of those things that allows you to you know see something that you want to achieve and the likes of simon sinek uh jordan peterson um yeah to an extent talks about it as well um and they all say the same thing family and you know those around you and being yourself and you know don't kick yourself so much and there's a reason they've gone on to do incredible things um and uh, the likes of gary v and simon sinek and my simon sinek's my big why yeah um yeah yeah he's the reason he's part of the reason why i did the podcast um so you know it's it's, it's those sort of conversations that really and I, the thing is through these podcasts it's about spreading that message that they have created as well and what they are going yeah. to want to do um because more people need to hear this at the end of the day um and with everything going on in the world right now we've all gone through really testing you know it's 12 it's been 12 months now um it's my it's but tomorrow's my second my second birthday in lockdown uh, right of course yeah, i know Had a birthday, kind of <laughs> yeah yeah and um <laughs> it's, it was a bit of a shock like you know i didn't expect no one expected you know this to go on longer than it has yeah. in a way but that's biology that's a virus you know it's nothing we can handle but what would what advice would you give to anyone right now who's struggling you know whether that be mentally you know if stuff going on in their life right now what would you say to them that could help them i think it's okay uh not to be okay if anything it's it's normal not to be okay i'll be i'll be worried if 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 you weren't if you were kind of not okay if you see what i mean but i, I guess what i mean by that is that it's a temporary temporary thing and uh adversity mental health or well-being challenges they you know they're not cryptive and they can come at any moment for anybody so it's perfectly normal to feel like that um my advice would be to not try and fight it, but to 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 be open about it and 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 to and to and to have a good network or people around you to feel comfortable talking about it, um, and to not beat yourself up about it. What I mean by that is not a personal thing to you. Every single person's got a mind. Every person has mental health, good and bad, and um, it's an absolute strength to talk about it. So. Um, be your own biggest supporter, I think. It goes back to what you said earlier around um, sometimes no matter how hard you try, you can't stop negative, you know, you can't control it. You, you wake up and you have a bad day and it, that's, 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 that's perfectly fine as well. So I think that um, just try and have that courage to, 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 to acknowledge it uh, and accept it. And reach out to as many people as possible and, and talk about it. When, 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 I, when I'm asked how I am, mm. I always say to the person, I always tell the person how I am, not this, yeah, I'm fine, mate, yeah, whatever. You know, if I'm feeling a bit anxious or whatever, I'll say, actually, well, thanks for asking, mate. Yeah, I had a bit of a wobble this morning, actually. And nine times, 99 times out of 100, the other, the other person's like, wow, thank you, I'm, I'm the same. And it's like, that's, it's that kind of stuff. It's like, but also as well, I think, I think, um, Another, another thing that, that's helped me is, is trying to get it out of my own head. So what I mean by that, there's techniques like I, I talked about the breathing technique. I talk about one, one, act, one random act of kindness and kind of choosing the day. But I think that um, uh, making it not about me in terms of picking up the phone and asking someone else how they are, you know, and, and just, just, try, just trying to serve other people. I think that's a massive thing around once you start thinking, like, oh, what can I do to help another person? You, 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 you're not even thinking about yourself, and automatically you, things can go away. So it's all those, all those kind of things. You mentioned it briefly um, when you're in the moment and you're doing, you know, you're, you're like, oh, I want, I want to tell people how I'm actually feeling. That is a really powerful point because um, yeah, Adam Sinek talks about it actually. He says um, when you're when you ask them how you are, and it's just like. Hey, you okay? So it's like, yeah, it's like, I, I, like my, say, for example, yeah. my dad's going through something. It's like, and like a week later, you come back and ask the question, it's just, oh, how's your dad? And it's just that, it's another level yeah. of 
being intuitive and in time with that person and their feelings. And that's building conversation, relationships, friendships. And if you can do those three things, and, you know, we, we, as a team, we do this as well. And um, we're, we're all on very much the same frame of mind. It's just like when we're having a bad day, it's like we, we want to talk about it. We want to come out and, you know, and share it because if you're not in a good, good day or in a good week, it's it reflects as well in the work you're yeah. Yeah, especially in this industry. I, th- I think it's so important. I, th- I think um, even if you're a mental health expert or you're a well-being expert or you're a CEO or leader, um, you're not immune. So who, who coaches the coach? Who leads the leader? Who, who, um, who's the therapist for the person who, who ther- who's the therapist for other people? It's like, it doesn't matter who you are. I think it's, it's so important to, so I encourage the leaders that I, I work with to, to sit down with their teams one-to-one have a, have a chinwag with them, you know, take off the met- metaphorical suit. Be a bit open, be a bit vulnerable, because what that does, it, it does build the engagement, but the, 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 the person that he's or she's speaking to, they're more likely to come back to you, as you say, and say, actually, I'm struggling with this, and that's what you want. You want those people to be open and honest. There's all that kind of stuff, and, um, and uh, th- this is where my, why my coaching business is, is picked up quite a lot, is because people can see my own authenticity and vulnerability, and I, I kind of get them on side, not in, a, not in a prescribed way, but just, just the way I am. And, and I, I get to the nub of it a lot quicker. They feel more relaxed. And that's what it's all about. It's just making, making the other person, whether it's your partner, your, your, your children, your, your superior, your, you know, whatever, feeling, just feeling we're all on the same level. No one's inferior. And it's one of my kind of mottos, no matter who you are. No, that's amazing. That's such a fair point. And if you come with that mentality and if anything, anyone can echo from this conversation, it's that just, just you know, be yourself and you know, continue yeah. going. And that when you can be authentic and to yourself, um, people buy like if to like uh, to, to buy from people, you have to like, know, and trust them. And if you're coming from a place of authenticity, yeah. that is the quickest way to achieve it. Um, yeah, it's such such a fair and like honest and to the point, really. Um, and my my last my last question is always I always use Richard Reed as my example because Richard Reed, his book, I read at a very important time in my life. It was I think it was a Christmas present many moons ago. Um, yeah. Yench, Caitlin Jenner, I don't know if you've read it, but he literally goes around different celebrities and asks if I could only tell you one thing. Um, and so my question to you is, Chris, if you could tell the audience one thing, what would it be? I, I guess the only thoughts and feelings that really matter are your own. And too, too many of us, you know, want to keep up with the Joneses or, or for, for example, put something on social media and judge their success around how many likes or comments are got. It's, 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 it's all about what you think of you and what you feel about you. Get that right and everything else falls into place. So if I knew that earlier and I wasn't running around like a blue ass fight to, 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 to please everybody else, you know, but um, that's all part of my journey. And I, I still love serving other people. But in order for me to do that, I've got to serve myself first. Yeah. And once you serve yourself first, then you can help other people. And if you can, yeah. that, you can go on to do things that were beyond people's imagination at the end of the day. And that's, that's literally happens. Absolutely. And um, huge. But Chris, thank you so much for joining me this week on the purpose podcast. Um, guys tune in next week where we take someone else down the street of the purpose podcast. Chris, thank you again for joining me. I really do appreciate it and speak to you soon. Thanks so much. I enjoyed that. Cheers, Richard. Oh, 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 oh,